my god, dude. 300 FPS in the plane, bro. I usually have like 260 here. Holy crap. Nope, the title's not clickbait. I finally figured out what files to change to get the same render core amount and video memory scale and so on for Warzone 2. My previous video was from the Modern Warfare 2 beta, and it's a little outdated since they changed the files and stuff, so I thought there was no way to do that, but now I have figured it out. I'm gonna include everything from that old video as well, so you don't have to go watch two videos. I hope this helps. Let's start out with the most important thing that I figured out today, changing the settings in the files. Now, some of you might have done this in Warzone 1, and I made a video about it in Warzone 2 earlier. However, they have changed the file system, so it was kind of hard to find. But as I said, I'm going to show you right now where to find those numbers. Go into Documents, find the Call of Duty folder, go to Players, and then hit Options 3, COD 22. Once in here, scroll down to Display, look for the Enable the Async Compute to Specific Cases, change True to False. Next, scroll down a little further to Gameplay, and navigate to the maximum distance at which Claire models are rendered. Change the 5,000. 100. Once you're done here, scroll all the way down to the bottom, and here's the beautiful thing that we had in Warzone 1 where you could change the render count. This, this setting tells the game how many cores from your CPU the game should use. So, this depends on what kind of CPU you have, so do not use my settings. Now, I recommend you try a couple of different settings. Depending on what CPU you have, you can always go in here and you can see how many cores you are. As you can see, it says mine has 16, but I set mine to 8 because I use an Intel processor. And half of the cores in my CPU are E cores, while only the other half are P cores, which stands for performance cores. And I noticed this in Warzone 1 that setting this to 8 gives me a much higher increase in stability and frames. I'm not sure how it works with AMD CPUs, so try a couple of different numbers between 1 and 16 until you find what works best for your rig. Also, here is the video memory scale. I know there's a setting inside the game now, but it only allows you to go up to 0.9, and a lot of YouTube tutorials tell you that you should actually be at 0.8. However, I set mine to 1.2. This might only work for high-end GPUs, however, but it works flawlessly, and it... It's smooth as never before in Warzone 2. Once you're done with this, hit save. Make sure you right click on the file before you open the game and tick the read only option, or it will change back to normal as soon as you launch the game. This is very important to end this with. Next, to get the most out of your GPU, go and search for graphic settings. Make sure that hardware accelerated GPU scheduling is on, and then you go here to hit browse, you go locate your Call of Duty folder, hit the COD icon, press add. Once in here, click Options, hit High Performance, Save, and you're done. Next up, Power Settings. Most of you know about this. If you know what I'm talking about, you can just skip this part. But for those of you who haven't heard of this, I'm going to show you how to navigate there. Control Panel, go into Hardware and Sound, and hit Power Options. Once in here, make sure you choose High Performance. Now, you can also get Ultimate Performance on some rigs or bit some Highest Performance, and I'm going to show you how to get those as well. For the Ultra Performance, I have this saved over here in my old video. I'll make sure to copy-paste this in the description of this video as well. Uh, you go in here, you hit Run, type CMD, and then copy-paste it in there. Boom. Now, your Power Options for Ultimate Performance should appear here. However, high performance and ultimate performance doesn't make much of a difference anyways. The only reason I use Bitsum highest performance is because I use something called Process Lasso, which is a great utility that you can set up to go power saver when you're not using games, and then you can select certain games where you want a certain power setting, so it changes automatically as soon as you launch those games. So I can recommend this software. That's it for the power settings. Let's get to the Windows settings. Go to Start Again, type Game Mode, hit it, make sure it's on. However, some PCs might perform better with this off. Try them both. Let me know which one worked best for you. Then navigate to Xbox Game Bar. Make sure that is off. NVIDIA users can navigate into the NVIDIA software itself and manage the 3D settings to customize a few things here. Most of these settings are already available in Game and Warzone, so you don't have to mess around with it. Also, until recently, I heard a low latency is actually the way you want to go for in Warzone 2. Uh, for some reason, this gives you more FPS, but I mean, maybe the latency becomes worse. I'm not sure. But... Back to the point, shader cache size. Make sure that you use as much as possible on the drive you installed your NVIDIA drivers on. For me, I'm gonna go with 100 gigabytes. It's actually funny how this has reverted since I installed the new drivers. So I'm glad I actually made this video because now I might even get more frames. Let's go to the next step. Some lower end users might want to launch the game in DirectX 11 instead of DirectX 12. And here's how to do that. Go into game settings, add additional command line arguments, type in dash D, 3d11 hit done 
Final part is going to be my game settings. I'm going to walk through real quick here. And even though I have a high-end PC, I am using these settings to get the most frames out of the game. I'll let this load up here. Go into settings, hit graphics. Not everybody likes to run the game on full screen exclusive, but it is the best option for the most frames and least latency. So if that's what you care about, go full screen. Screen refresh rate, highest available to whatever screen you're using. Resolution, same thing there, highest available for whatever screen you're using. V-Sync off, V-Sync menus off. Custom frame rate limit. Some people tend to actually limit their frame rate, but even if I do limit my FPS to 300, although my screen can only show 240, I have found that unlimited just gets you a little bit extra juice. Not sure why, but I do know it draws more power. So let's go to quality settings. A render resolution at 100. Uh, if you do care about getting those extra few FPS, you can use NVIDIA DLSS or uh, AMD FSR or whichever GPU you're using. Uh, I'm pretty sure you get a few more frames out of that over time as the software somehow, uh, some sort of learning software that over time increases your frame rate. I have played on and off with DLSS, but I can't come around to the, the, the annoying noise you get on loot with it. So what I'm running is Filmic SMAA T2X. Antilizing quality, normal. This doesn't matter since you already changed the file to 120. Texture resolution to normal. Texture filter anisotropic, low. Nearby level of detail, low. Distant level of detail, low. Letter draw distance. Don't know why it doesn't have anything here. Probably has to do with the file we changed. So leave that as it is. Particle quality, high. Bullet impact and sprays is optional. It doesn't matter. I like to have it off so I don't get distracted by some things. Persistent damage layers. This is new to me and I actually want to have this off. Shader quality low. Tessellation off. Terrain memory. Same thing here. This has to do with the files that we changed. So don't touch this. On-demand texture streaming off. Streaming quality low. Volumetric quality low. Deferred physics quality off. Water caustics off. Shadow map resolution off. Screen space shadows low. Spot shadow quality low. Spot cache low. Particle lightning low. Ambient occlusion off. Screen space reflections off. Static reflection quality low. Weather grid volumes off. As I said earlier about NVIDIA reflex low latency, apparently running it off will get you more frames. I'm not sure how that affects the latency on gunshots or whatever the thing about latency means, but recently I've been running it off and I'm not seeing any problems with it. Game's running smooth, baby. Depth of field off, world motion blur off, weapon motion blur off, film grain zero. The lower field of view will naturally give you more frames, but we're actually going to skip this part because this is more preference. Okay. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to leave a like on the video to help me out. And of course, feel free to follow me on Twitch if you like Warzone content. I play mostly solos and I'm live five days a week. Take care.